take a look at some while loops. I'm going to put a problem on the screen. I'd like you to pause the video, open up Visual Studio, and try to solve the problem. Once you think you've solved the problem or you've gotten as far as you can, you can resume the video and I'll show you the solution. Okay, first problem. Uh, I'd like you to output 1 to 10. You can output 1 to 10, uh, each number on a separate line. Initialize the loop control variable to 1, and then modify the loop control variable by 1 each time through the loop. Okay. Go ahead and pause the video at this point and try to come up with, up with your solution. When you're done, go ahead and resume the video and I'll, I'll show you a solution. Okay. I'm assuming everyone has a solution at this point. Here's an example. We're going to say int i equals 1. So we're initializing that loop control variable. We're calling it i. Uh, and we're going to say while i is less than. And at this point, we either say while i is less than 11, or we could say while less than or equal to 10. So that would include uh, output for 10. OK, we're going to say console our right line i. And at this point, we know that we need to modify the loop control control variable i, so eventually it ends. Um, so we could put that on a separate line, i equals i plus 1, or we could use the increment operator in C-sharp. So I'm going to say console.rightline i plus plus. And what's going to happen, because this is the postfix operator, it's going to do the console.rightline first, and then increment i by 1. Uh, and it's going to save that, that val new value of i back to memory. Now if we use the prefix operator, in this case, it would output the first value as 2, because we're coming in as 1. With the prefix operator, it does the operation first, and then the, in terms of uh, order of operations, it does whatever's next in that operation. In this case, it's an argument to a method, so it's going to increment the value of i, and then call the right line method. Okay, so there's our solution. It should output 1 to 10. Oh, I hit a button there. Let's try it again. Oh, 2 to 10. I have the, the pre-increment. That's a good uh, demonstration there. Okay, so let's say I++. Plus plus. And now it's gonna, going to output... Now it's going to output 1 to 10. Okay. Okay, so next one, let's go from 10 down to 1. So I'll let you come up with these values. It's not going to be 1 and plus 1. Go ahead and pause the video, see if you can come up with what the loop, what will initialize loop control variable as, and what will modify the loop control variable by. Okay, so we want to initialize loop control variable by to 10, right? Because we're starting our output at, at 10. And how do we want to modify the loop control variable? Well, in order to count down from 10 to 1, we need to decrease the value by 1. OK, so let's output 1, 10 to 1. If you haven't already, pause the video now and try to come up with the solution on your own. You know, when you're uncomfortable with it, you're trying to work your, work your way through the problem, that's the best way to learn is if you try it on your own. So I'm assuming at this point you've already tried a solution, and we're going to come up with one here on our, on our, uh, demo, in our demonstration. So I'll comment out, comment out the previous loop. So we're going to create a variable called actually let's call, call something else. It doesn't have to be i. We'll call it ten, and we'll say while counter is greater than zero. I could also make this greater than or equal to 1, either solution would work. OK. And in this case, we want to decrement the value so we're going to say i equals i, I'm sorry, keep doing that, counter equals counter minus 1. 
Now, could we say counter minus minus? Yep, that would work. So we could decrement the value of counter. Um, or we could say counter equals counter minus one. They're the same thing. So let's let's use the decrement operator so you can see what that looks like. And I'm always going to run my solution. You can see I've made a few mistakes this time through, and uh, that's that's pretty normal for me. So here we go. It's going to start at 10 and decrement till counter is greater than zero. As soon as counter is equal to zero, this becomes false, and we exit out of the loop. Okay, let's go from... 1 to 1024, and each time through the loop, let's multiply the value. Let's multiply the value by 2. I'm sorry, we're going to initialize it to 1. And let's multiply the value by 2 each time through the loop. So basically we want all multiples of 2, including, we're going to include 1, go from 1 to 1024. So multiply the loop control variable by 2 each time through. So go ahead and pause your video at this point, try to come up with a solution. Okay, so here we're going to output 1 to 1024, multiples of 2. include one there. Okay, so we'll say int i equals one. We're going to initialize it to one. And then we're going to say while i is less than or equal to 1024, console.write line. Now, we can modify i using a traditional assignment statement with the multiplication operator. Let me show you a different way to do it using the compound, uh, compound multiplication operator. So the compound mul multiplication operator is just a shorthand way to write this. There's really nothing to it. Um, so i times are equal to. So what's going to happen is we're, we're just taking out this part of the statement. So we're going to multiply i times 2, whatever the current value of i is, and then we're going to assign it back to i. Remember the assignment operator is a right to left operation. It does whatever's on the right side first, then it assigns the value back to the variable. Okay, I'm going to comment out this previous example and let's just make sure it runs okay. Alright, looks okay. All right, let's do one more. I want to show you guys the modulus operator. So in this case, we'll, I'll put even values from 1 to 20. So uh, we could just uh, start at 2 and uh, you know add 2 every time through. And that would give us even values. Uh, but I want to demonstrate using the uh, modulus operator, so you can see what that looks like. So first, let's create a loop that goes from 1 to 20. So let's say int i equals 1, uh, while i is less than 21, console.write line i, i plus plus. Now the, the problem with this statement is that we're outputting every value, right? So we need something inside of this while loop to, to, only out, to only run this output statement if it's actually uh, even number. So that's where we're going to use modulus. Uh, if you can remember like long division if in grade school where you would divide a number. Say, say you divided a number 4 divided by 2. That would evenly divide into 4. And instead of before we learned about decimal places, we learned about remainders, if you can remember that. So we would say uh, 4 divided by 2, remainder 0. 5 divided by 2 is 2, remainder 1, if you can remember that. 
Okay, so what we're going to say is I modulus 2. So this is our operation that's going to return whether or not uh, there's a remainder. This, so if, if you think of the example uh, 4 divided by 2, it's going to return 0 because the remainder is 0. If it's 5 divided by 2, it's going to return 1 because the answer is 2, remainder 1. Well, modulus is just returning that remainder value. So we're going to say if it's equal to 0, and that indicates to us that it's even because it, if we divide the number by 2, the remainder is equal to 0. I hope that makes sense. Uh, so we're going to run it now, and we should see values output 1 to 20, but only the even values. Okay, and our last example, let's do a nested loop. So in this one, let's do, uh, we want to um, output cell values. So think about Excel. If we have uh, rows and columns, we have a cell value. Or if you think, if you think about matrix, um, a matrix, you have rows and columns, and each cell is made up of the row number and the column number. So let's try to do that with a nested loop. So a nested loop is simply uh, one loop inside of another. Um, so we're gonna actually, let's, let's just do these in separate lines. So let's say this first value is zero, let's start at zero. And for the second loop, uh, Actually, we're going to declare that inside the loop. Okay, so let's say while i is less than, and we'll just go to um, three rows and columns. Okay, so here's our inner loop. And if we said console.write line i, and we increment it by one, it's just going to output. zero to three, I'm sorry, that's four rows. Let's do four rows and columns. Okay, then inside of this, we wanna add the columns. So we're gonna say each each time through the loop, actually, let me declare it up here. Each time through the loop, we're gonna say j equals zero. And then we wanna loop while j is less than four. And we wanna output the values of the, the uh, first rows, row column on the first line. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use console.write and we're gonna output i comma j and then a space. Now, with each row, we still wanna move the cursor down to the next line, but we don't need to output the value of i. We've already done that inside of our inner loop. So let's just do a console.write line. Uh-oh, what did I forget to do? Well, looks like I forgot to increment the value of j inside of that inner loop. So let me increment the value of j. Try rerunning it again. Okay, so here we have it. We have row and column 0, row column 1, row 0, column 1, and so on. And then we, we put this right line statement, we move it down to the next line. And we, now we have row one. Again, we're still in column zero. A good way to learn nested loops is to run an interactive, interactive debug one. I won't do that here, but I'll let you do that. Um, so you can see how the flow of the statement runs. It's gonna 
you know, first come in here with the value of i is equal to zero, and then it's going to run through the entirety of this while loop, right? And then it comes back up and it goes back to the top of the outer loop, and then we run the inner loop in its entirety, and then we reach the end of the outer loop, and we return back up and run it. Uh, so really useful, especially for processing multiple values, we can use a nested loop. All right, I hope that helps. Practice, practice, practice. That's what's going to help you to learn this stuff.